I'm going to be teaching on just the essentials, uh, what I consider the essentials of music theory for worship musicians, for church musicians. I know a lot of musicians get intimidated by music theory. It gets dry. It's too analytical. They're not very analytical, maybe, so they're not very curious. And by the way, I, I'm always, uh, I always want to encourage you to be curious. I think in curiosity keeps us from learning and it, and it limits us. It stunts our growth. So uh, I would encourage you to be curious and always ask why. I think the why question is the most important question we should ask, not just about music and music theory and learning, but it's, about, it's the most important question we should ask about life. And I'm always alarmed uh, and concerned, frankly, about people who don't ask why. So I pray that you will ask those why questions and go deeper, deeper than what I'll do in this video. But I'm going to keep it at just what I consider the essentials. And that's why <clears throat> we're looking at a music keyboard here because the music keyboard gives you a visualization of what's going on within music theory because uh, we're really, the music keyboard is showing you what a, a scale looks like. It's, in this case, we're seeing specifically the C major scale, but uh, really the, the spacing between the notes and the key of C major apply to any major scale. Um, and we're also, by the way, looking at an A minor scale, but I'm just going to cover major. And uh, here's the C note. Now, that, that C note also exists an octave higher. It's right there. Um, and an octave means eight. So if you count white keys, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's an octave. It just repeats again, okay? There's an octave there, and then you got an octave down there. I'm only showing three octaves uh, here on the uh, piano keyboard, almost four. And um, that's what an octave is. We're really not counting those five black keys in between. If we did, that's 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then it, it starts over again. So there's really 12 notes within music, and there's 12, that's why you have. 12 frets on a guitar, and, and you, when you get to the 12th fret, it starts over again. Um, but on a, um, in, in terms of uh, scales, we just uh, count four, five, six, seven, that's seven notes, and then the eighth note is the octave, it starts over, okay? So we call that an octave, even though there's 12 notes between, because we're only thinking of the notes within the scale. So the white keys represent the notes in the key of C major, and the black keys represent the notes not to be played. They're not in that key. So if we were to get into key signatures at a deeper level, that's what you're learning. You're learning which group of seven notes do I play for this key, and which group of five notes do I not play so I don't accidentally hit a clunker, okay? And, and while that's interesting stuff to know, um, it's not what I'm going to consider an essential thing. If you want to learn more about key signatures, you want to get into the circle of fifths, and that helps you to uh, memorize and visualize uh, key signatures. But what we're going to cover basically is something called the number system. And for you to understand that, first, we just need to know where our Cs are. Mm. And that's that, that, that C is the – I've been playing its first note of these scale, the scale, and it's – to the left of the two black keys, okay? So keep that in mind. That's our first note in the key of C. And everything I'm going to show you here is going to be in a key of C major. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to harmonize. So a harmony means, uh, you know, you'll play two notes together. And I can't just play any groups of two notes. Listen, that's, that's dissonance, okay? And that's kind of dissonance too. So a harmony is going to be two notes that are put together, but they're going to, for sake of what we're going to be doing, we're going to be playing them um, two notes together that are uh, within the same key, and, and that in this case, in the key of C major. So if I do this, if I play that C, and I'm going to basically skip the next scale degree, just that note, and go to there, and play those two together, that's a harmony. And that's uh, specifically a third, okay? One, two, three. So we have a third. Okay, now I can take those thirds and just start climbing. Okay, so um, those are thirds just moving up, and they're harmonies. Okay, if you're learning, if you're vocalist and you want to learn to harmonize, there's the basics of it. And you can see that there's different groups of uh, black keys or notes that we would not play, notes that are not in the key of C major, between those harmonies. And that's where the music gets a little complicated at times, okay, because you got two notes, um, or, you know, 
but you can see the two black keys and then the groups of three black keys. You have no no black keys between the third and fourth scale degree, by the way, and none between the sixth or seventh and eighth scale degree. Um, so that's just the quirk of way music works. And um, we just played thirds. Now what I'm going to do and is I'm going to harmonize two sets of thirds. Like here's my first third we just played. I take from that E note and I go up to uh, I'll make another make another third above it. So one, two, three. Okay. Then I now I have this one. And I'm gonna put those two together. Here's one third and there's a second third. Okay. We play both those sets of thirds. That's called a triad. And this triad is specifically a uh, C major chord. Okay. So we're in a key of C major, and that's a C major chord. And it's major because that would be minor. And that E flat note is not within uh, the key of C major. That's in the key of C minor. We're not in a key of C minor. Okay, so in key of C major. So no black keys in this key of C major. So there's our, um, that's our sound. Now I'm going to take that, this, this triad, and also move it up like I did with the thirds. And I do... You might remember this sound. Let's see if we can play it. I'm playing this on a touch string. Sorry, it goes. Uh... Uh, you know, uh, lean on me. <laughs> it's kind of lean on me. Um, it kind of just moves those triads up and down. Most music doesn't move thirds like that, but or triads uh, like that. But anyhow, um, they use something called inversions. Um, so what we're doing was I moved those triads up and down. We're playing chords, and those chords can be numbered, okay? The lowest note is going to be uh, the number we think of this uh, with the chords. So that's the one, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So this is the one chord, and the one chord C major, okay? The two chord, that's D minor. Why? Because... That would be D major, and you can see we can't have a black key in the key of C major. Okay, so the two in the is is minor. Three is minor because that would be major. Okay, the four is major because that would be minor, right? So four major, five major, six minor, seven. Whoops, is is actually it's diminished. Okay, and what I'm just showing you is how. Uh, something called the number system is formed. And the number system tells us how chords are organized within a key. So if you're in a major key, in this case we're doing C major, but it applies to any major key. So that's why this is so valuable. In, in, in any major key, key, the one is major, the two is minor, the three is minor, the four is major, the five is major, the six is minor, the seven is diminished. I'm actually going to show you a better way to do seven later, okay? So one major, two minor, three minor, four minor, or four major, five major, six minor, and seven diminished, okay? A, an easier way to think of that, and to write this down, if you, hopefully you're taking notes, is one, four, five are major, two, three, and six are minor, and then seven is diminished. And as I said, I'm going to change seven later on for you, say. But that's what you want to uh, think of in terms of music. And all the chords in your songs are going to uh, follow that pattern as long as those chords are staying within the key, okay? Uh, in other words, in this case, on the piano keyboard, we're all, as long as we're not playing black notes, okay? Um, if you play a black note, that's a borrowed chord from another key. It's called a temporary modulation. And that does happen, but it doesn't happen very so too often in most worship music styles. Um, the black gospel music, like Israel Houghton, would use would do that more. But your average Tomlin, Crowder, uh, you know, Elevation, etc. Song Hill Song, the average one, they tend to stay within the same key, and they don't do a lot of temporary modulations or borrowed chords very often. Um, when they do, they're kind of predictable also. You kind of you can even determine what the most common uh, borrowed chords are. But uh, in other words, they don't deviate from this number system very often. Like that's a simple way to, for me to say it. 
Um, and when they do deviate, even the deviations are fairly common deviations. So, so you learn to think in terms of the system, and then you learn to expect certain patterns, and you see them. And even when you see a deviation, those deviations are pretty normal or standard deviations. So you even learn to expect uh, those or they become kind of predictable. So you learn what notes are more likely to fall within the song. And again, the, the, the chords are going to follow that pattern. One, four, five are major, two, three, and six are minor, and then seven is diminished, all right? So um, that's the pattern with the music. And what you basically want to do is as you're looking at a song, um, I'll show you a chord chart later. We want to be able to um, follow the numbers. You want to take the chords and you want to you think of them in terms of numbers um, because this is really a different way to think about music. Now, um, as I said, I'm going to show you a chord chart a little later and we'll veer off this screen. But before I do, um, I said that uh, chord seven if you Google music, the, the number system, if you read about it anywhere else or you've taught, been taught it in school, they'll, they'll tell you, play a diminished, like I told you, okay? That's a diminished chord. Um, but I teach my uh, students something different because you'll, never, you'll probably never do that within a worship song. I mean, very common song. Think of As the Deer. And it, it basically, As the Deer Pants does a descension. It does one, seven, six, five, four. Okay. Listen to this sound. Tell me if this sounds like as the deer. Uh, as the deer panted for. Does it, you hear the problem on seven? Right for the that seven diminish doesn't sound right, does it? Okay. But it you can think of it as dropping. You know, as I said, going down the stairs one seven six five four it doesn't go down farther than four by the way and it goes back up to five and drops to one um so i want to give you a substitute uh, a better way to think of number seven a more useful way to think of seven uh, instead of playing seven is diminished we're going to think of seven as a it's called a five over seven now what does that mean um, a five chord would be the g major chord okay but when I say over seven, that means that the bass note is the seventh note in my key that I'm in. So I'm in the key of C, so the seventh note is B. The five chord is still the, you know, just G. So that's what you're going to see in the key of C major um, or any major key. You're going to say, uh, instead of making seven diminished, think of it as five over seven. Now, I know that's going to be more complicated and harder to think of initially, and it really just, it'll slow you down. But that's the whole thing. This is a different way of thinking. The different way of thinking will slow you down initially. Don't let that intimidate you or stop you. Push through it. And eventually, it becomes very natural. It becomes second nature for you. And this at that point, um, you can... Uh, you'll be able to do it like it's uh, back of your hand stuff, okay? So 5 over 7 is what we're going to play instead in the number system instead of a 7 diminished, okay? Like that sound does not work. Now, a 5 over 7, basically I said it's a G over B. So I can, if you know inversions, I'm not going to get into inversions, this, uh, instead of playing B diminished, that's a G, that's a G major inverted, so that the B is on the bottom, okay? A 5 over 7, if you will. Um, I'm sorry, I played that wrong. We're playing, that's, what, that's a 5 over 7. It's just inverted. Um, all an inversion is, I said I wasn't going to cover it, but an inversion is easy to cover. Take a chord. Take the, take, in this case, I'll take the lowest note and raise it an octave. Okay, that's an inversion. I can also go the other way around and take that G chord and take the highest note and lower it an octave. And that, that's an inversion. There's two inversions for three-note chords. There's three inversions for four-note chords, but all you're doing is taking one of the notes, usually the lowest or the highest note, actually not usually, all the time, you take the lowest or the highest note and you raise or lower it an octave, okay? So I took that G and raised it an octave, and that's a, that's a G major still. It's just the first inversion is what we call that, okay? So now we play as the deer, 
and we get this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do 17654, but when I play 7, it's a 5 over 7. Second thing, I'm going to, I'm going to invert it so you, you'll be able to see and hear it better, okay? It's, and this is the sound of the song. As the tear and it fall, the water, and actually, I'll do that for now, but it does something different, actually. I'm going to slow down to the Okay, so one, seven, six, five, four. It's just descending the stairs. See, so that's why I, I hope you hear and see why the number system is potentially important because now I have a system to think of that song. See, if you don't have the system, you're thinking of basically it's just a hodgepodge randomness of chords. It's Okay, here's a C major, here's a G over B, here's an A minor, here's a G major, here's an F major, and here's a C. And you don't have any system to, or, uh, to think about that group of chords. In other words, that, you don't recognize that, that chord, those group of chords belong to a family, like the Brady Bunch, you know? You don't think of the C major might be uh, Mike Brady, <laughs> and the, the G over B might be Cindy, and uh, the A minor might be Alice, whatever. You know, you, you don't... And then, the, you know, you don't think of those as all having roles within the family. But when you learn to think in the number system, now a chord progression is not just random chords put together. It's stuff that functions within a family. And everybody in the family has a job or a role, a function. And as you learn to think in terms of the number system, you start to learn, to, you start to uh, hear and associate those sounds with the numbers and you start to uh, figure out those roles, and all of a sudden you see a new order to music that you don't see before. So when I think of it as the Deer's chord progression, I don't think of it as complicated as I just described it. C major, G over B, you know, C major, G over B, A minor, and G major, and F major, G major, and C. I don't think of that. I think of it as one, seven, six, five, four, five, and one. Okay, and you can see and hear that it sounds the same, but the way I think about it is just it's just dropping the stairs from one to four, you know, in order. I can count right, and I can do it one seven six five four, and then back to five and one. All right, and um, that's much easier in the long run to think about. In the short run, this is harder to think about. Uh, since we're talking church musicians and worship, remember the story of um, Jacob and Esau and their twins, and Jacob has a birthright. He's got out of his mom first, and that birthright was his So he's because he's older, and that means he inherits. He gets to inherit his father's um, uh, property and Every, possessions, but Jacob's really hung, or I'm sorry, he's, yeah, Jacob's really hungry, so he sells his birthright one day to Esau for food, because yeah, Esau had gotten, the, had had the food, and um, he, uh, I, I, do I have that right? Was Jacob the one that sold it to Esau? Or was it Esau that Jacob? Uh, I think I have it backwards. I think it's the other way around. Anyhow. The point is, you know, that the selling of that birthright, that, that story is telling us that um, we it's so tempting for us to sell out things uh, that are important because they're hard or harder for us in the short term, but they're better for us in the long term. And our temptation is to trade that which is good for us over eternity or over the long term. It's, our temptation is to sell that out so we can gain short-term pleasure, right? Well, don't fall into that trap with music, okay? You can be intimidated by this. You can ignore it. You could uh, refuse to push through because initially this will slow you down. Initially, having to think of songs in terms of a number system and having to count the chords on a chord chart um, and think in two worlds is really what you got to do will slow you down. But in the long term, it'll benefit you. Now, I'm going to take you and show you this stuff on a uh, chord chart now.